We are six months into the year 2024 and these are my most used mastering plugins. I'm trying to keep this video as brief as possible, so let's get right into it. I'm not even gonna talk about these plugins in depth. If you want that, subscribe to the newsletter, send an email to news at realhomerecording.com. So first of all, the all-in-one plugins, which basically have most of the features that you would want with a mastering situation. We have Ozone 11, which is classic. It's got all the modules you can want. Honestly, it's like probably the best overall mastering plugin out there. This is the advanced version of it. It's got so many things. And uh, yeah. Next up, Noise Ash Stereo Finalizer. I've used this when other things did not work. It has a great widening effect and it can do a few other things as well. Wine from Acoustica Audio, I just demonstrated this one in a recent video and I just really like what it does. It is more of a finalizing plugin than an all-in-one, but for what it does, it does it well. And my favorite feature on it is the Tilt EQ, also known as the Tone Knob, along with the Euphonic Control, the Alive option. And see, I'm already describing it and I said I wasn't gonna do that. Anyway, moving on to Kive Audio, their new N-Fuse plugin. Well, it's not really that new, but it's new-ish. So N-Fuse combines SSL Fusion along with the Neve Master Bus Transformer. It features saturation, equalization, compression, and a stereo imager effect. You can either make it wider or less wide. And when you hit this switch right here on each of these modules, it changes to the different hardware that this emulates. Very cool idea from Kive Audio. Just one of these would have been nice, but having both pieces of hardware in the same plugin is just pretty darn cool. Moving on to saturation plugins, Slate VCC, my new favorite, the Louder Than Liftoff Silver Bullet plugin. This is now, well, I wouldn't say my second favorite, but this is a Desert Island Mastering Saturation plugin, Diamond Dynamic Saturator from Studio DMI slash Acoustica Audio. It just sounds darn good. And uh, the Black Box HG2, similar to the Diamond, cheaper, went on sale. This is second best to the Diamond. If you're on a budget, I would go with this one over the Diamond, but the Diamond for me is my favorite. And then we also have the IK Multimedia Tape plugins, which for some reason are giving me issues with resizing. Uh, but anyway, excellent sounding tape saturation plugins. I like them better than Slate Digital's VTM at this point, although they do use a lot of CPU. So be very careful with that. Your DAW may overload. And make sure you are using either the 499 or GP9 tape formulas and keep your tape speed to either 15 or 30, depending on the machine, for general mastering purposes. Now, if you want to use 7.5 IPS, the setting right here, if you want to use that seven and a half, you go right ahead, but it's going to make things a little more lo-fi than you might want. True Iron sounds good for mastering on the 111C, 4001B, and 108X settings. Again, I'm plowing through these. If you want a longer version, go to the newsletter. For compressors, my number one plugin is actually using analog compressors while mastering using the Access Analog plugin or MixAnalog.com. And if you look through these compressors, you'll understand why. These are all real pieces of hardware. They sound great. Uh, I'm not saying every single one of these is used for mastering, but you have a lot of options here, including this, which apparently is a new option. I'm not even aware of this. I'll have to look into this one, 5254 Diode Bridge Compressor. So yeah, good stuff, good stuff, guys, over at Access Analog. 
Moving on, the glue from Cytomic. This is an SSL bus compressor emulation. A lot of people like using this plugin. This is a freebie from Analog Obsession. The Buster SE is a free SSL bus compressor plugin. You can also donate to the cause if you would like to. And then we also have VBC Rack from Slate Digital. For me, the standout feature on this one is the FG Red. There are not any other Focusrite Red 3 compressors that I'm aware of. Although I think Focusrite may have made one a long time ago. I'm not sure. But I use this plugin primarily for the FG Red at this point because I already have a good SSL bus compressor plugin and I also have a good very moo plugin. But sometimes I like to use this because it has all three in the same plugin. Smart Comp 2, a lot of people don't think about this one for mixed bus purposes, but look at all those presets or whatever uh, learning modules. Anyway, yeah, whatever you want, there it is. It analyzes the signal and, and it gets you started. LA-2A, yes, you can use it for mastering purposes. Whether you're using the hardware one up on Mix Analog or the Hornet one, which is very affordable. Virtual Mix Rack, which features the FG Stress from Slate Digital. Yes, the Distressor can be used for mastering purposes. A lot of people don't think to use it, but I have and with good results. Lower ratios are better. Tiger from Acoustica Audio. This is the Ultra version. And I like it because it's similar to a distressor in a way that it's clean and it can get a lot of compression without sounding nasty. You have a lot of options for the compressor curve, the side chain curve, and overall just an excellent sounding compressor. And then finally we have a Neve 33609 emulation from Acoustica Audio called the T-Rex Precision Comp. If you don't like the mixed bus compressor options I've already given you, try that one out for size. And next up, we're going on to the clippers, starting with K-Clip Zero from Kazrog. The zero means it's free. So yeah, check this out. Air Windows 80 Clip 8 is also free or donationware. Ash Ultra is the one that I like to turn to, but it is on the more expensive side from Acoustica Audio. Lots of options for analog to digital converter clipping emulation. And then finally, as I said earlier with Wine, they have a built-in clipper module. Only one, but you might like the one and only one if you get Wine or try out Wine. Okay, next up, limiters. Ozone maximizer. This is my old go-to I've been using Ozone since the year 2008 with Ozone 3 or 4. I can't remember which one at this point. But anyway, Ozone 3 or 4 had the IRC limiter, brick wall limiter built in, and I've been a fan ever since. It may not be the best. That title might go to DMG Audio's Limitless plugin, but uh, Ozone is not that far behind. Smart Limit. I believe this one may sound a little bit better than Ozone Maximizer. It definitely does a better true peak than the Maximizer. You can also analyze your signals. So you can, this is like the easy way to get things done. But because I recommend Ozone to pretty much everybody, the, the one built in the Ozone, you may as well use it. But Smart Limit certainly comes in handy and I'm glad I have it. Loud Max is a free plugin. And I like it on acoustic guitar, bass guitar, and if I didn't already have other brick wall limiter options, I wouldn't have a problem using this one. This also has True Peak built in, the ISP button, which stands for Intersample Peak. You can enable that, and it gets you closer to being around negative one decibels maximum, or whatever you set it to. I recommend either doing negative one. If you really want to go up there, negative three. 0.3 at the most, but aim for negative one these days. And then finally for the limiters, we have FGX2 from Slate Digital. All right, last section is the utility plugins. These typically will go at the end of the mastering chain. So first of all, but certainly not last, 
is Acoustica Audio's Sienna plugin. Simulates a great control room. Simulates different speaker types. It just is a plugin I don't want to mix or master without these days. And before Sienna was Sonarworks Reference, which you can calibrate speakers or you can have a headphone calibration, but because it doesn't have a lot of speaker emulations, which actually I don't even think this one has any, I think the newer Sonarworks Reference with the sound ID may have that, but this version does not. So I typically lean on Sienna or ARC these days for the speakers. Um, now, True Balance. True Balance, I do not want to master without this plugin. It just allows me to check my equalization curve to make sure that it is within the general confines of other music that's out there. You can also load reference tracks into this if you don't like the selections as they are, but I don't think I've ever used that option. It's just, I use this curve. Now for mastering a whole album or an EP, you may want to use those references, but um, generally I just aim for this. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Yulian Loudness Meter Pro, what more can I say other than I like this because you can do a lot of things, including exporting PNG or PDF files for loudness purposes. It measures over a long time period if you want it to. I think up to 24 hours, yeah. So, good stuff. Ozone 11, need I say more? It's got one of the best dithering plugins out there. And it has an AB referencing. It has a Kodak preview. It has a great amount of utility built into it. And Isotope rocks for that. Autified Mix Checker Pro, they just released a new version of this called Mix Checker Ultra. And I'm gonna check that out in a future video. But for now, I'm just showing you guys Mix Checker Pro. What it does is it simulates different speaker types. It also has background noise simulations, <laughs> which is really cool. Second to last, but certainly not least, Isotope RX. I would not want to master or mix without this plugin. It is a life-saving plugin. It is right up there with Ozone. And, you know, if you do any level of professional audio processing, RX should be in your digital toolbox. And then finally, a newer plugin. This one is Dove from Acoustica Audio. This is the smaller version of the plugin called Fire the Dove. This is similar to Oig Sound Soothe in that it goes after frequency resonances dynamically. It's kind of like a magical plugin. I know it sounds weird saying that, but basically if you're having issues with your audio, this is a good one to try out on it because it may just solve your problems. Uh, let's see what the presets have to say. So these are the different kind of issues it addresses. I'll zoom in on this so you guys can see it better. And um, yeah, good stuff. Good, good stuff. So if there's something I missed that I really, really should know about, then let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget the longer version of this video is available to newsletter subscribers. And eventually I will make that a members only video. So be on the lookout for that in your newsletter inbox. And if you are a newsletter subscriber, don't forget to whitelist news at realhomerecording.com. Otherwise, you may not receive the email. Thanks for watching this realhomerecording.com video.